For the AutoCAD and BricsCAD users, we're now going to review how to create a civil site design alignment. This is for the purposes of creating, say, a road string or a profile string. For Civil 3D users, you'll be creating your alignments with Civil 3D. So you can either review this module if you wish, or feel free to skip to the next module. For the AutoCAD and BricsCAD users, we're going to be using the following cyan polyline that is found within the drawing environment. Now just a word about the drawing just before you start to proceed with this particular module. We have turned off the imagery um, or the aerial image um, that is found in the back of this particular drawing just because as we're using the alignment tools the draw order within the annotation um, part of the module um, can sometimes get lost behind the drawing imagery um, whilst we're in the middle of um, creating and editing. So just for ease we've turned off the image um, uh, to give us some clarity whilst we're working through this. We're going to start off by going to go up to the alignments tab at the top then click on the create alignment button. We're then going to select somewhere towards the right hand side of this polyline, somewhere down here, anywhere you want, but just left click on it. This form is modeless, which means that we can zoom in the drawing whilst we're editing this form. So that's exactly what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to move the form down and just zoom in to just really where the start of the alignment is. And you can see the um, white arrow, which indicates the direction of chainage, which is very helpful. The first thing we're going to do uh, for all alignments is provide a name. Once we've provided a name, we've got the option of a string type. And now the string type is entirely optional. When you're creating network strings later on in the network string section of this particular course, you've got the option to have the alignment assigned a type. When we come to create a curve return, for example, you can use your own custom alignment. When you pick the list of alignments, any alignment that has been assigned the type curb return will automatically be jumped to the top of the list. So it's a time saving item. It's not going to affect the way in which the software operates, but it allows you to jump to the curb return alignments that you have created at any point. And again, this is editable. So if you decide that the alignment is no longer going to be for say, for example, a curb return, you can just click on the blank section at the top to blank it out. The description again is also entirely optional. Underneath, we can then choose to do two things. First of all, deleting the existing object will delete the polyline that we are using for the basis of this alignment. My recommendation is that you do not delete that polyline. If at some point you need that polyline for the purposes of drafting, for example, so my preference would be to uncheck that box. To the left, we can choose an alternative start change. So if you do find yourself in a position where you don't want to start simply at zero, you can click on the little set button and then type in an alternative change. If it was previous to zero, we'd be typing in minus, say for example, 100, or if it's a positive number, we can just simply type in, for example, something like 10. We're going to leave this at zero. At any point, we can come in and edit that value if we choose. When you start using Civil Site Design for the first time, there is some default annotation which gets applied to the alignment. This is what we would call our sort of classic or original annotation, um, which can be found on the annotation tab at the top of the form. We, however, are going to be using the newer alignment annotation, which is found by checking on the box called Apply Dynamic Drawing Labels. As soon as you check that box, you may see some change happen in the drawing. Um, and if you do, that's great. If not, you can click on the little refresh button at any point when you make changes to this form and the refresh button will refresh the alignment and whatever changes you've made within the screen. There's two parts of this form. Firstly, the section list. So what we're going to do is click on the standard pull down and choose the following from the list. Once you've picked that, you can click on the pencil icon. We're going to review how this looks. So in this particular form, we can choose what changes are annotated along our alignment. If we go to the pull down at the top, you'll see that we've got a varying list of um, defaults that we've provided to you within the software. You can go in and work with any one of these lists. You have the option to be able to create a brand new list from scratch, save the list in its current state, which to be honest with you, clicking on OK is also the same as clicking on save, saving as and copying as well. So if you find yourself in a position where you want to use one of these lists um, for, say, for example, another alignment, um, then you can go ahead and copy. One thing I will say is that this list is specific to this alignment. So if you find yourself creating another alignment and going and picking 
this particular style or sections list that we've got chosen here. It will be the same original setup for every single alignment, so you customize each one as you go along. If at any point you decide that you don't want a particular change to be annotated on your alignment, then you can go ahead and uncheck and check the box. On the right hand side is where we choose what changes we want to have annotated. So down the bottom, first of all, we can say minor label spacings, major label spacings, and actually change those values if we want, simply by typing in a number. If we wanted to go ahead and add in additional change markers at a particular point of our choosing, we can do that by going up to the Extras tab. Let's say, for example, we wanted to have an additional marker added in at change 41. We could type in 41 in the first cell and press Enter. We'll get the opportunity to update the list down the bottom. And as soon as we do that, 41 gets added in as an extra. And again, if we didn't want it, we can uncheck it from the list at any point. If we wanted to add in a range of extra annotation through a change range, we can type in, say, for example, 42. The end change could be 48. And we'd like a marker every one meter. Okay, so a little bit extreme, but just an example of how this works. Let's click on Update List. Now we've done that, we've got all of these extras being added in. And again, we can go ahead and check and uncheck these as we wish. Now, if you've got your own custom list being created that differs from the one we've got on screen, that's absolutely fine. Let's click on OK. Now we've done that, you may see that the annotation is no longer on screen. If you need to, you can click on the Refresh button. And as soon as we do that, you'll see that the annotation is being displayed back on screen. And if you have a zoom in, you'll be able to see all these extra um, alignment points that we've added in. Now, the section list is all about what points along the alignment do we want to annotate. The label set underneath describes how those labels are actually presented to us. So at the moment we've got something called standard, which is one of the defaults. Let's go and pick major, minor and geometry and then hit refresh. Now you may see that there are slightly less points along the alignment which are now being annotated. To see why, we need to go to the Alignment Annotation Label Set button. And when we go there, we're going to go to Current Set and find the very set we just picked, which is Major, Minor and Geometry. So the first thing that you should notice is the reason why some of your alignment annotation was removed from the drawing was because for the major alignment points, we have text. For the minor alignment, we have a tick. So for the minor alignment, this would have been for the every 10 we're only seeing a little tick marker. So if we wanted to see text, we could pick on the pull down, pick major text, click on refresh, and we're now seeing those um, minor geometry points being displayed with a piece of text instead. So again, these lists can be created from scratch, copied, saved, entirely up to you how you manage them. But the great thing is that you can customize what parts of your alignment geometry are labeled, first of all, with the sections list, but then you can control how each change is displayed for you along your particular alignment. We're going to go back to the geometry tab. So we're now going to click on refresh just to make sure there's no other changes, which there aren't, and then click on OK. Now we're going to review how we can edit the alignment once it's been created.